In this video, master baker Jenny Bristow showcases four different types of cakes. And of course all the different grains and flours. We've put an assortment of recipes together that showcase the variety of flours. Plain flour, self-raising flour, where do you use baking powder, where do you leave out the raising agent. To begin making cakes or muffins, preheat the oven to the required temperature and grease and line the cake tin or line the muffin tray with cases. The ingredients include dark syrup, margarine or butter, brown sugar, oatmeal or wholemeal flour, self-raising flour, ginger, dates, sultanas, salt, egg and milk. If you come to a recipe like this, you can make these little individual muffins. Um, you can make it in smaller tins, you can make smaller quantities in order to get everything cooked in class in that time straight away. I'm going to put into the saucepan, I've added the syrup, I'm going to add a little bit of margarine to this one. Polyunsaturated margarine, but if you prefer to use butter in that, that's entirely your choice. I am a great fan of butter. I find butter works very well, but again, from the point of view of health, and I know you're very much promoting healthy eating in schools. To that as well, I'm going to add the sugar, soft brown sugar. And I'm just going to melt those together. So once it starts to melt in the heat of the syrup, just lift it off the heat. Then we come over to the flours. I'm using an oatmeal here, or a wholemeal. To that, I'm going to add the flour. And again, if and where possible, and whenever you're baking and cooking, try and sieve. Because if you sieve, you're really going to get that little bit of extra air into the mixture. So there we are. Now we've self-raising flour. This is flour that has the raising agent in it, so we don't need to look for the baking powder. We're also going to add a little bit of ginger, and it's the ginger that's going to give this, obviously, the flavour. And I'm a great advocate of using lots of dried fruits. And I've got a couple of ounces of dates, a couple of ounces of sultanas. Right, all of that goes in. Just give that... A good mix round. We then come to the next part which is salt. When it comes to this I'm going to actually leave it out. I rarely use salt whenever I'm baking. Um, some people feel you get that little bit of extra flavour but that's a choice entirely for you. And certainly when we come to look at a savoury recipe you'll see lots of clever ways how you can leave that one all out. That's the stage we want to put it in. Nice and soft and it's all sort of completely melted down. If I added this when it's absolutely boiling, um, it's going to react here with the self-raising flour. It's got raising agent in it, and it's going to react very, very quickly before we get it into the oven. To this, I'm going to add an egg, and I'm just going to whisk it slightly, and a little bit of milk. And you can either use full cream milk or semi-skim milk, which gives you the lovely option here. Mix this round. So this isn't the stage where you say, well, I must go and ring somebody, and I'll come back again, and we'll finish that one off. The, the, Raising agent in here will have started to work. And don't overbeat. That's the secret in something like this. And again, that's the sort of consistency that you want. I'm going to transfer this now into the tin. The other thing I think that would be very relevant is you could make lovely little individual muffins. It's going to go on the middle shelf of the oven. And the oven temperature there is about 140 degrees centigrade. I'm a great believer in waste not, want not. I mean, I think you look at your granny and your aunts and they're really thrifty bakers and they don't throw anything out. You don't need to flatten it out. You don't need to do anything more with this one. It's quite a runny recipe. Just give it a little shake and that's it, ready for the oven. This one has absolutely no fat in it. So from the point of view of health, it's great. This is a sponge mix. You can use this for little plain buns. You can use it for butterfly buns. You can make so, so many different recipes. You can add so many lovely fruits to it. The ingredients include eggs, caster sugar, plain flour, corn flour and vanilla essence. The ingredients we're using, we've got four eggs. So caster sugar, not granulated sugar, that's very very important because this will beat up together so much better. So you want to mix that until the mixture just doubles up in volume. And I always used to love that. That figure of eight used to stand there and let it all dawdle around the place. So that the mixture almost holds its volume there. You want the eggs at room temperature. You want the sugar at room temperature. And it's also very, very important just to have a nice clean bowl. You've got chemical raising agents and you've got mechanical raising agents. What we have here is the air that has come into it. Um, in the last recipe, we used self-raising flour that had the baking powder in it. Um, and so that really made the cake go up. So now that we've got the air in, really, really important to keep the air in. Three and a half ounces of flour, and that's plain flour, and one ounce of corn flour, which gives you a really nice soft texture. I love making cakes. I love that very satisfying thing of folding the flour in, taking your time and doing it. 
nice sort of relaxed sort of way of folding in the flour, a little bit at the time, and do take time with them, sort of keep turning it over. You don't want to be in a panic when you're doing this, you don't go in and go like that or you're going to knock all the air out, but so you sort of need to be calm and relaxed, which is how teaching is these days, I'm quite sure. About three to four, <laughs> three to four additions. And again, by sieving, if there are any little lumps in the flour, then they'll disappear. And you can add lots of flavours. Don't be scared when you're baking or you're cooking to put lots of nice flavours into things. Um, in this one here, you can add a little bit of lemon juice to it. You could also add a little bit of lemon rind. Be careful if you add acid. Acid tends to affect the volume of a cake and it will go down. A few little drops of vanilla essence in. And this mixture that we have, endless uses. Little plain buns, sponge buns, you can make butterfly buns with this, you can use this as a topping for lots of lovely fruit desserts. Um, you can add lots of things, you can add dried fruits too. So in with the remainder of the flour, always sieve where you can. Now, this will reduce down by about a third. If you're heavy handed, you can reduce it down by a half. Uh, so it's one of those processes you do want to take a little bit of time with. When the ingredients are combined, Divide the mixture evenly between the two tins. So there we go, just going to scrape all of this. We're not allowed to lift the bowl again. These are great, these are really, really good. And it goes, and just nice and easy. Just shake it about very, very gently. Next, bake in the oven at 190 degrees Celsius or gas mark five for 15 to 20 minutes or until cooked. Then transfer the cakes to a wire rack to cool. The ingredients used to fill and decorate include whipping cream or thick yoghurt, icing sugar and peach slices. Mix the cream or yoghurt with half of the icing sugar before spreading on top of one of the cakes. Fresh or tinned chopped fruit can be spread on top of the cake. Over goes the top, we get our soup. Just a little bit of icing sugar over the top like that. We're going to look at the all-in-one method, which is great. Everything goes in the bowl together, you just mix it round and you put it in the oven. If you were doing that by the normal creaming method, creaming the butter and sugar, then folding in the eggs that you've beaten, sieving in the flour, you would get enough mechanical and chemical raising agent in there to make that one work. But because we're short circuiting the system and throwing everything in the bowl together, which works well in class time in order to get everything made, then you need that little bit of extra baking powder. The ingredients include soft margarine or butter, caster sugar, eggs, self-raising flour, baking powder and lemons. It's good again if you want to do something like this that you don't bring your fat out of the fridge really really hard. If you can get it out have it nice and soft again at room temperature so that it's going to beat up for you nice and easily. The caster sugar goes in like that. The eggs, we're just going to whisk the eggs slightly. So in go the eggs. Then in goes the flour. And the interesting thing about the flour is again always sieve the flour. This is self-raising flour, so this is cake making flour with the raising agent already in it and full of baking powder to this mixture as well. And we'll sieve it in, simply because if it's been in the cupboard for a little while, it can get a bit damp. So in goes the raising agent, like that. So just turn this on and off we go. I'm going to add to this a little bit of lemon rind and also a little bit of lemon juice. Now you do need to be careful if you add lemon juice that you don't add too much because the acid in the lemon juice is going to react very, very strongly with the raisin. There we are. That's enough mixing. You can use it for fruit sponges, you can use it for all sorts of cakes, you can make fabulous desserts. It's a lovely mixture. So just divide it up again between your two tins and then into the oven to cook. And the oven temperature for this is much higher. That's so that when you put it in to the oven, what you get happening is you get the fat melting. You need a high enough temperature uh, to get the flour and the starch grains to burst to absorb the fat. If you put it in at a low temperature, you're going to discover the fat's melting and it's going to weep and it's going to sink and do all sorts of nasty things. So temperatures are very, very relevant in the making of cakes. And again, if you have a recipe where you're adding yogurt to it, um, if you're making a yogurt cake, you can very often find recipes like this, which are yogurt based. 
Um, you need to be careful because yogurt tends to separate out if you have a very high temperature. Sometimes you need to stabilize it. You may need to put a little bit of blended corn flour in, which catches it and it works very well. Next, bake in the oven at 190 degrees Celsius for 25 to 30 minutes. When cooked, the cakes will be golden brown and have slightly shrunk away from the edges of the tin. The ingredients used to fill and decorate include lemon curd, elderflower cordial and icing sugar. The lemon curd and elderflower cordial are mixed together in a small bowl. This is then spread over the top of one of the cakes. The next cake is then placed carefully on top. Icing sugar is then dusted over the cakes before the lemon rind is sprinkled on top. The ingredients include butter, eggs, vegetable oil, milk, bran, plain flour, baking powder, paprika, cooked pieces of bacon and cheese. And the savoury version we're going to make are bacon and cheese. But you can also make this with fruit. Um, you can add honey to this recipe, you can add a bit of cinnamon, you can add grated apple, you can add bananas. Lovely with blueberries, lovely with strawberries and raspberries. The first thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of butter into the pan. Don't have it bubbling. Again, like the last recipe, you just want to have it nice and soft here. Again, at every opportunity, if you have the ability to get mechanical raising agents into your baking, that's exactly what to do. Just lightly beat you. To that, I'm going to add the vegetable oil. And as I said, this can be olive oil or rapeseed oil. The choice is entirely up to you. Uh, we're using the semi-skin milk for this one. So that's going in there. And again, I'm just going to give that a slight mix. And there we go. Now we need another bowl and so this time we're going to put all the different flours into the bowl. And again bran's great because you just get that little bit of extra fibre. I'm putting it into the sieve just to let you see what I'm doing with it but it's not going to go through. You'll get a little bit of it coming through. There's absolutely no point in trying to sieve that one. Um, but when you come to the flour then yes you certainly again want to go with the mechanical raising agent here and you do want to sieve that one. This time instead of using self-raising flour I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of baking powder. When do you use self-raising flour? When do you use um, plain flour and baking powder? The choice is entirely up to you. Um, I find one works equally as well as the other. A couple of teaspoons of baking powder, not level, but heat, quite sort of generous. And if you want to sieve those, you can. And so to this, I'm going to add a little bit of cheese. And again, you can go with low-fat cheese. You can go with mozzarella. You can go with feta, whatever type of cheese you want to use. I'm going to keep a little bit back for the end. Bacon, which I've just dry fried in the pan. I haven't added any fat to it, again, to just keep my eye on the fat content that we're using. And then we're just coming to the stage now of putting all of this together. But before you start to do this, have all your little bun cases ready. Because remember, once this starts to mix, the action of the raising agent starting to happen in here. And these are going to start rising up in the end. So let's pour this in. And if you feel you want your mixture a tiny little bit softer, then you can certainly add another little bit of milk to it. The one thing you don't want with this is to have your mixture stiff. Just mixing this round, and then I'm just going to add the butter to it. You can see the temperature we have with the butter. It's just melted. That's exactly what you want. Not a lot of saturated fat going into these, which is really very good. And the less you mix this, the better they're going to be. You're not going to stand here and cream this, just long enough to get it to come together into a really nice sort of soft mixture. And I can feel with this at this stage, the raising agent is just starting to work. You're conscious of that because it just gets that little bit thicker. Some people pop this mixture into a piping bag and pipe it out. And then you can make them quite fancy at the end by just putting in a little bit of cheese on top of these. Next, bake in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes or until golden brown. A skewer pierced into the centre of the muffins should come out clean. Is that whatever academic ability you are teaching, there's something very satisfying in cooking and baking, taking the children, showing them how they can do something, and going out the door with something that they've made themselves. And I think from that point of view, it's really very good.